I will, I will just start with prayer. We have prayed for you. And one of the things that came up that, that God really wants to lift up people because we, are, we can be very downcast because of Corona and the isolation and the lack of um, inspiration. And uh, God spoke that he really wanted to lift us up and give us new uh, fire and new inspiration. And also one thing that came up that we can be really uh, uh, clarified again today about um, the connection we are, we can be, we can make uh, with our art between heaven and earth. That's just really a heavenly connection and, and the privilege of that. And uh, I just start with prayer and then Jennifer takes over for, with the seminar. Jesus, I thank you that we are loved that we are special, that you love us to heaven and back, and that each one who is here um, may know uh, who they are, what they're called for, that the, the art and the creativity are, is from you in their lives, and that you will really encourage each one of us today. Amen. So have a good time. See you later. And Jennifer is going to teach us something. Yeah. Well, welcome. Uh, I'm Jennifer. And um, I'm going to be sharing about uh, growing in the prophetic. Um, and why do I, we uh, chose this topic? Because a lot of artists are have a prophetic anointing, some without even knowing it. And... Um, you know, it's just a, a, an area where God is just moving uh, through. And um, I really think it's important that uh, we learn to mature in the prophetic as an artist, but also as people of God, because uh, the words that we speak bring life or even death. It says in, um, it says in um, Proverbs. So it's just... Um, it's really important that what we say uh, will have impact and life and brings life to uh, other people. So my cup of tea is just brought. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, there's a lot of, um, well, I think misconception and uh, disappointments and um, misuse of the prophetic word and of the gifting and um we need to learn how god um yeah has it um wants to use us and um i just i, I when i think about it um uh, i always get a little uh i'm i'm not saying that i have the full wisdom so <laughs> i can be wrong too so just test it you know, test it, take the word of God and just test the things that I say, because uh, that's what grown, grown up people's mature people uh, need to do. We need to test and we need to keep the good things and uh, leave the, the, the things that are untrue behind um, and not throw the baby with the bathwater away. You know, it's um, it's an important uh, lesson. So. I want to start with saying that we are all a prophetic people. We are prophetic people. We are prophetic nation. And uh, why do I say this? Because, uh, well, sometimes people think, well, I'm not, I'm not that prophetic. I, I have trouble hearing God's voice. I, I'm more practical. I just do the groceries. I help out uh, my neighbor. Um, I um, send cards to my uh, to my sick friends or something, you know, um, but in everything, even in the practical things, you can be uh, prophetic and God's just using you in another way. So um, that's just one thing I want to say, because the Holy Spirit is living inside of us and he's leading us. He guides you. So in your movement, in your movement with God, you're walking with God. There will be times then when he guides you and you are prophetic even when you don't know it. Um, God's word says in John 10 that we can all hear his voice. We are his sheep. 
be be be, <laughs> you know, and we all can hear his voice. And um, so, yeah, if you if you have this flock and you see the shepherd and you see the flock, when you're standing close to the shepherd, it's easier to recognize his voice. It's easier to hear his voice. But when you're at the edge of the flock, away, or you wandered off, it's much harder to hear it, to recognize it. So it's, um, yeah, it's our responsibility to just stay tuned in with God, to stay close to him so we can hear his voice much better. And um, I know people can really struggle with hearing his voice. And maybe you've even struggled. Uh, if you if you ever struggled with hearing God's voice, can I see some hands of recognition? Yeah, <laughs> even I, <laughs> even I. Well, and I think it's not because we can't hear his voice. It's because um, we are able to hear so much other voices. It's our ability to hear other voices and not only the voice of God. And so we have to navigate through all these different kinds of voices uh, to recognize his voice. And that's, that's harder, you know, um, when somebody is making a lot of noise or you're here, a lot of people speak, then it's harder to just um, uh, hear his voice. So I wanted to do a little practical um, exercise. And therefore I wanted um, to ask you to unmute yourself. So I'm going to do something really weird in this Zoom meeting. <laughs> I all want you to just unmute yourself. Yeah. And um, then um, I'm going to talk to uh, Sarian. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and oh. I, want, I want you to make a lot of noise. Just talk and just uh, speak out. And then I will just give Sarian instructions and she has, well, well, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so just start with making noise. Hey, Carlo, how are you? 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 Yeah, just uh, stop, stop, stop. Yeah. Stop, 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 yeah. <laughs> really good. Well, um, Sarian, could you hear me through all the kind, all the noises? Now you were talking yourself too. Uh, no, I yeah, I I could hear you. Yeah. I I heard your voice, but I didn't hear what you're saying. Ah, so you, you see, it's just. It's just a little practical exercise just to uh, experience how this works. And it's the same with God's voice. When God speaks to us, we can be busy. Our children can be running around. Um, we can be full with thoughts of well, things that need to be done or things that um, we think about. And then it's really hard just to recognize his voice. And um, when we are silent, uh, it's easier so we can train ourselves to hear God's voice better um, and the word says in Romans 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God so faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God so you can uh, improve your hearing through the word of God. So if you read the word of God out loud, or you hear the words being spoken, you can train yourself because it's the perfect will of God. It's revealed within, the truth is revealed within. And if you don't know the word of God and you don't know God's will, you know, it's just, um, it's that simple. And we all make it a very complicated. Uh, I for sure am, a master in it <laughs> to complicate the things of God a little bit more for myself or for others as uh, sometimes but it's it really is you know it's really simple the, this gospel is a very simple gospel 
maybe sometimes even too simple to accept it for us. So uh, you can just improve your hearing by uh, hearing the word of God. And um, another thing you can just uh, train yourself in uh, what I do when I just, um, in the beginnings, when I had my prayer time with God, I just would write down, I just would ask the Lord a question and I would just take pen and paper and I would just write down, begin to write down everything that came to my mind. I would not think about it for, oh, is this God's voice? Is this my own voice? Is this, um, I, I would just write it down, write it all down. And then when you are um, looking back at it, reading back, exactly, then you will see uh, there's just this line uh, through it. You can just recognize the things that are from, uh, from God. And it's a, it's a nice way just to be training yourself in that area. Um, everybody can prophesy. Yeah, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> you know, uh, because in Revelations uh, 19, verse 10, it says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And um, when I was younger, I didn't understand that verse at all. I just, what, what are they meaning? The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I would read it again and again. And it just didn't land i really had to have a, a revelation of it and then i thought well everybody can share a testimony we all have a, a testimony we have a testimony of how we came to christ we have the testimony of how he set us free uh, how he changed our life how he touched our life with his love and um well if you do that when you give a testimony to someone else about what God has done for you in your life, then um, you make a way for that person to receive the things that you are talking about. So for instance, when I share my testimony of how God healed me through art, I uh, made um, an, um, a painting of uh, the crucifixion of Jesus and I just uh, draw, his, um, draw his hand on the cross and the nail through it and the blood which dripped out. And when I, was, um, when I was just drawing that, God hit me so hard. It, um, I just got a new revelation of his love for me. And um, I was just drawing the, the nail and it was just like I was crucifying him myself. It was just so weird. And so just I was so aware of what he had done for me. And um, he told me when I just that it that it would heal, heal somebody. But I didn't think that it would heal me. <laughs> I was just uh, having a nerve. Um, it was a nerve damaged through an operation. And um, I had a lot of pain in my right arm. And uh, the doctor said, well, there was just the uh, research done. And they said, well, you know, you have to live with it. It's damaged and it won't heal anymore. Well, and I'm, I'm a kind of person that says, well, God says otherwise. <laughs> you know, the blood has the final word. And, um, and I just, I believe that God wanted to heal me. Uh, but I didn't know how, you know. Um, and um, I was just drawing it. And when I finished the drawing, the pain in my arm was completely gone. And I didn't notice it until it was weeks later that I, I hadn't any pain anymore. I could do any, everything without pain. So this is just an example when I share this testimony for some of you that uh, are making art uh, there can be physical healing uh, through your art. It's a prophecy. It makes a, a spiritual, it makes a way for that um, to happen in your life as well. It's building up faith. You know, the story of uh, Bartholomew when he sat down the road 
and he was blind. And you know, when you sit down the road, the passengers in that time were just traveling. They were just all kinds of travelers. And they, uh, he heard the stories of those people and it built faith. It built faith. And when he heard that Jesus was coming, he just shouted out, son of David, heal me, deliver me. He just was shouting out and he didn't care because his faith was built up. You know, he heard all the stories, it, the testimonies of people that he healed the lamb, he healed the sick, um, even the blind. So it made, a, it planted a seed in his heart that it was possible for him to heal. So that's how prophecy, uh, the testimony works as a prophecy for other people. Um, so everybody can give a testimony. <laughs> so everybody can prophesy. It's just the, uh, the beginning. Um, well, pro prophecy can come in many forms, like I was saying. Uh, it can come in spoken word, and it's the most common, you know, that God speaks to your uh, mind. Um, he gives you thoughts, his thoughts about uh, a person or about things to come. Um, you have sometimes a Bible verse, um, a testimony, an object. Um, I will read it out in Ezekiel 4. It says, uh, now, son of man, take a brick and place it before you. Draw a picture of the city Jerusalem on it. So he had to draw something on a tile. And then make a model of a military siege against a brick. So he has he had to just, well, you know, when uh, the, my children were young, they were playing with the Playmobil. And uh, they would just make a whole city or a whole a scene they would just place the puppets all around you know and that was just what ezekiel had to do he had to make a model um for a military siege so it just see and it was a prophecy about jerusalem and about what god wanted to say to the people uh, you can have a dream you can have a mental picture in your mind in your imagination um in a vision, there's a painting, a sculpture, prophetic movement can come through dance, um, a form of theater, your stories. And maybe uh, you recognize, hey, God is, um, is doing this, um, he's speaking through me much more uh, through all kinds of things. Uh, maybe um, he will make you sing a song I remember when I was young uh, uh, and I was used to prophesy with words and then God once spoke to me. He said, I want you to sing it. Well, that's a challenge. If you suddenly have to sing a prophecy instead of just speaking out a prophecy. And I was just, uh, are you kidding me, Lord? <laughs> I, oh, I was just nervous, very nervous, but I've learned to obey, you know, and when you just obey God, then the blessing will flow. And it didn't, well, I, I just, my voice just trembled all over. You could hear I was really nervous, <laughs> but you know, God is just faithful and he touches people anyway, because it's not about me, it's about God. And that is something we need to um, be really uh, aware of, that it's the gift of God through us. It doesn't say anything about us it says all about god's heart and many times um i hear people say well he's a prophet and he does this and he does that and how how is this possible and it's not even only with the prophetic uh, giftings but it's with all kinds of uh, god's godly men who would just done then fall into sin or something but it's it says all about god it's all about god's gifting it's not about the people and he uses he uses people that are well we all have mistakes and flaws you know it's really uh, we all have that and um so it's up to us and it's our responsibility how to uh, bring it how to bring the message and um what i um 
what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a picture and maybe Izzy, you can just show the picture of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> you share that with us. Um, yeah, it's the third one. Yeah, <laughs> number three. Um, just one, uh, skip one. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah, really, thank you. Um, when you are standing be before the Eiffel Tower, it's a whole other picture than when you zoom in in the details or when you're standing on the top of the Eiffel. You know, we all see just a part of the Eiffel Tower. Just so we all see, we all receive just a part of, um, of the whole, as you can say it. And um, yeah, it's really important to realize that, that we don't have the absolute truth or the whole truth. We just see a, a part. It says in Corinthians 13 verse nine, we know in part, and so we prophesy in part. It's really important that we just, um, yeah, to understand it. And uh, what I just, um, I, I like to observe, I thank you for, sh uh, for sharing that um, with us. Um, when I just, I, I like to observe and I just see that, um, well, people receive a revelation of God and they they share it and they bring it as an absolutely truth it's almost a whole theologic uh thing on its own a dogma you know and uh when they do that there's no room for other people to think otherwise or maybe they just haven't had that revelation yet or they can't just not receive it yet because they are not in that process yet you know and what you do is then bring that standard very high and um, other people think, well, then it's just uh, me, it, you know, they think it's their fault or they think, well, I'm not that holy or I, why can't I just, um, you bring division instead of grace, you know, and you were just once at a, at a place where you uh, had to have that revelation of God. And I think, um, what I just, um, yeah, I hope we can uh, see it that way, that when we just receive something from God, that we um, give that grace to others uh, and when we share it, um, when we prophesy, just so we have a responsibility as a giver um, to give to, to the word. And I will give an example when uh, you see two people, a man and a woman, and uh, you have a word for them. And we, we almost uh, immediately assume, oh, that's a couple. So um, when God speaks about uh, marriage or love and relationship, we, we can make that connection, but it's um, more wiser to just ask for sure, are you two together? And it's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just, taking out um yeah how do you say it <laughs> well there has been many mistakes i can tell you <laughs> from experience and from uh, being in prophetic meetings or just in meetings um alone that there they people prophesy and they just assume things that aren't true and they have to um they have to set it straight and sometimes it doesn't um they forget to set it straight, you know, and then people get damaged. And that's so, um, I think it's sad because we have a responsibility uh, with the gift to bring it, um, yeah, as, as, as holy as God gives, gives it to us. And um, another um, responsibility you have is as a receiver. When you get a word from God, you have to test it, you know, um, and I have heard a lot of these um, prophecies that people uh, received a prophecy to go abroad, another country, and God would use them in another country. And um, they went off, sold all their things, uh, sold their house and packed, <laughs> packed, make the arrangements and they went. 
and then they came home disappointed. They came back disappointed. And why? Because they didn't recognize the season. You know, you can receive that word and the word can be very true, but you have a responsibility to test it. Well, in what kind of season am I? Is it for now or is it uh, for in the future? You know, you have to test those things and you can ask God about it. We need wisdom in those things. Um, and then I come with the maturing part. Um, it's also co-working with the Holy Spirit. Um, we put away our childish things. Paul says, I've put away my childish things. When I, uh, when I spoke like a child, I, I saw like a child. And um, well, it's in Corinthians. Um, let us see if I can just look it up. Um, Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I just need to find it. Uh, when I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and googled like an infant. And when I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. And Paul, when you look it up in Strong's, uh, he talks about um, being a child um, spiritually. And so it's, uh, I will just get into that because uh, we all want to hear the will of God. We all want to do the will of God. Am I right? Are you right? Do you want to do the will of God? Yeah. And many of us uh, would like to have a piece of paper come down from heaven <laughs> with the will of God on it for our lives, right? To know, to know exactly what to do. Yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Eh? But, um, you know, God wants to co-work with you. So it means you have a say in it. Yeah, really. You have a say in it as well. Oh, that's new, eh? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, you're a son, you're a daughter. And when you go through maturity, you know, when you were a servant or you were a child, um, uh, the, how do you say it? That your boss will tell you what to do when you were a servant, right? Um, and when you were a child, your mother and father will say, well, you put these clothes on. No, you cannot have uh, candy today. Um, you have to be at school, so you can't play uh, with miss, uh, with your friends because you have to do sports or we have to go to grandma or, you know, your parents will decide what to do for you. And it's just like that with God. But when you grow up, your parents just leave you free, you know. Uh, it was a time when I told my children, you, can, you have to ask if you can take a candy out of the candy pot you know uh, but I at a certain age you stop with that because they already know the rules they know that they can't have a candy right before dinner time and um, you know and when now there are just uh, uh, almost um, adults well I don't tell them what to do now you know we cooperate together we just uh, talk about things and we say well uh, Saturday, we want to do this. How are your schedules? You know, we work things together out. And it's that way with God too, you know? Um, in Acts 15, verse 28, it said, For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us that, there, that they would, um, the new believers, the non-Jew believers, would stay out of um, the blood, um, how do you say? Um, the offerings, the the, <laughs> the meat. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's a that's a difficult one to translate. Oh, maybe uh, you know easy <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> well, that's um yeah, it's a difficult one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, they had to decide whether they had to circumcise their uh, their selves. You know, just like uh, yeah, the Jews were uh, did, and they say no, you you don't have to do that. That's and new believers, as non Jews. Um, so they talked about with the Holy Spirit and they said the Holy Spirit and us, we thought it good that we made this and this decisions. So it, it's like that with us, you know, 
God gives you freedom to say what you want. And the beauty of it is I just get a lot of questions about people, uh, Christians, who struggle with the will of God for their lives. And this is just a huge thing. Uh, they are so scared that they uh, don't do the will of God, that they will, when they, that it's their own desire, you know. <laughs> and, um, well, I believe that when God made you, he put dreams and desires in your heart. It was his idea at first, you know, and then he put it in you and you grow up and you just, eh? uh, and most Christians, they don't, they don't ask for big things. You know, the people I meet, they are sincere in their relationship with God and they don't ask for money and rich, richness and a, a expensive car and etc. just for their own benefit. No, they, they sincerely want to do the will of God and they want to serve him. And I, I'm, I'm sure you have that too, you know, and um, um, it's not about, and then they say, well, but is it, is it this my desire then? And then I say, you know, God made you. He made you. He put the desires of, your, of his heart. He put it in you. And he made you. And he knows what you like and what you don't like. And he knows what, um, you know, where your heart gets all excited about, you know. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just like that. It's, and um, so you have, you have just this, this room uh, of freedom to walk and to choose. And God showed me once that I was on a road and um, it just, um, on that road, there were all doors, all different kind of doors. And some, some doors were just standing just next to each other, but they were all open. And I was just like, well, wh why can't there be just one door, you know, <laughs> which I can choose and then I go through it and then, you know, it's easier, right? But God, God respects you so much and he loves you so much. And he says, just, I have this all for you out there and you just choose. And whatever you choose, it is good. You know, I will, I, I am rejoicing with you and I'm going with you. If you go through that door, well, you, you just see a whole other landscape than when you go that way. Or, you know, the learning curve is different, but uh, it's, the, it's his way. And um, we have to learn to, um, yeah, to really cope with the, with the freedom he has given us. It brings responsibility also, you know. It's not just all about, yeah, this freedom, <laughs> but it brings responsibility as well. And I just, um, yeah, I just wanted to say that to you, you know. Um, and when I just heard God's voice and God speaking through me, I always thought, well, God showed it to me and now I have to bring it out. <laughs> I just speak it out there, you know, and I just don't wait. I no, it, it just had to come out because I felt it that way, you know. And when I, I learned as time grew that, um, well, the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet itself. You know, it says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 32, and uh, what it means is that your timing can be way off. God can show you things. But, you know, when it's uh, time to close the service or they are just in an announcements, um, you have to wait. And the, the anointing of the message or um, it will not go away. And that's wisdom. Knowing when to speak and when to deliver the message you know and um and it and you get by it with um well <laughs> i made a lot of faults um but it it's just uh it's all about hearing and just understanding lord do you want me to share it now is it a now word has it to be shared now do i have to you know i'm we're all spiritual people and like when we see in the natural uh, i can see in some of uh, some some of your rooms where you're sitting, and I see all kinds of things. I see uh, paintings, I see um, 
uh, bookshelves. I see, well, what else do I see? I see photos in, uh, in frames. I see uh, ceilings. I, so I can see all kinds of things. And in spirit, it's the same. We as um, artists are very, how do you say it? Uh, we are um, picture, we think in pictures. So we can just imagine the spiritual realm is very natural. Um, you know, you see all kinds of things. And you don't have to share. I don't have to begin a whole uh, speech about the bookshelves behind Yeti Knope's uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I see this bookshelf and I see books in it. Red books, yeah, great. <laughs> but I don't have to preach it because it's not necessary, you know. Um, so you just learn um, what is what what does God want you to share, you know? Um, just take time to just talk about it with God, and that's cooperating with God as well. Um, I want to show you some pictures of uh, a horse. And you see, maybe you can uh, share that uh, in the share screen. Because this is something I feel God is uh, really, um, yeah. This is a picture of uh, wild horses. And uh, God showed me um, wild horses. And um, I really feel... Uh, some of you are just like these wild horses. And um, you can share the next one. And God wants you uh, to go back into training. Because you know, when, uh, when you're a wild horse, you won't let anybody sit on you. Uh, you want to be wild and free. You want to run where you want to run. But you have to learn. You have to learn uh, to just oh hey, when the horse is um wants to be driven on they have to learn how it is to to what it feels like to have the saddle on and the bits in the mouth and um and so forth they have to learn when it when they have to stop when they have to turn left or right how that it, how does that feel and i think um what i really hear is that um that God's, God's wants you to train. God wants to train you in his, um, uh, in your artwork as well to, um, to cooperate, to learn to cooperate with him. And, um, and it's not about, uh, it, it's, it's about being dependent upon him, you know, learning how to, how to hear this small voice of him, learning how to um, make the right uh, facial expression when you play out uh, in a in a play, or how you when the, what color you can use, because God needs you for His army, and this is just I um, I really believe that God is raising up an army of artists um, to bring a to bring out um, a big harvest. You know, the generations are young people. They are all, everything is visual. Everything they do comes through images. And uh, he, God wants to show how he feels. God wants to show his heart. He wants to show his beauty. He wants to show his glory. But he has to have an army, he has to have horses who know how to uh, react when he's sitting on them, you know, and they can be wild and free, but yeah, they have to learn it first. Um, so this is an image I, I just got and um, you can show the next, uh, Izzy. And some of you are really, really um, distracted very easily. And it's a, uh, and in this time of Corona, the, um, it's, it's difficult to not read all the different opinions and um, dogmas and theories, even among Christians. And so God um, showed me this picture as well of a horse with this, um, I, don't, I don't know how, it is, how it's called, but uh, 
well, it's, it's, the horse needs to focus, you know, <laughs> and it can only focus on one thing, on his road, on his own road, where uh, God has put him on. He directs your pathways, you know, he prepares your ways and God just wants you to focus on him. And I, uh, it's um, because uh, it feels like you're in a storm right now. And this is for some of you. Um, it really is like you're in a storm and God wants you to just focus on him and just stay on track, you know. Um, when and Just for me as well, um, when I was just a, a, a beginning in painting, um, I began to paint and I was just really easily, I compared myself with others. And God said, I want you just to do this to focus on me and not look even at paintings of others, how great they are of, you know, just focus at me. And then I began to uh, receive how God worked through me. And uh, I, I began to understand that my art did matter because he just, yeah, he just used me in, in my special way, in my unique way. And it's the same with you. Um, so, you can show the next picture, uh, Izzy. Because um, it doesn't mean you will not run around free. You know, it doesn't mean that. When you have learned to walk and to tr be trained in the, in the ring, it doesn't mean that this won't ever happen again. It's, it really is. There is just freedom. Um, it's a freedom bound by love, and I, and when we need, when we are, we have learned to be dependent upon Him and to lay our lives down, even our arts, um, as an offering to Him, then He will take it to the next level. And this is just a promise of Him, you know. When you lay your arts down in My hands, My glory will shine through it. And I, I often have uh, experienced that the things that I was least proud of <laughs> or where I, where I thought, well, it's, well, it's a piece, you know, that the anointing would flow uh, even uh, more than when I thought, whoa, I'm really impressed. Did I make that, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just like that, you know? And I would just want to bless you with this. Um, I really, I really feel strongly that God, um, God is calling you uh, for his army. Um, and he, he's just asking, he's going on the front and he has fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. And it's just like in a song. Um, maybe you know it, um, maybe not. And he's calling out to you and me, will you write with me? You know, and um, well, he's just asking you, will you ride with me? So yeah. I just, yeah, I just want to bless you uh, with that. And um, yeah, Thank let you. it let it just sink in, in your heart. Um, so I'm done <laughs> with, um, with my part. Um, I just want Thank to you. pray. I just want to pray with you. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you are just uh, so gentle with us, and you know, uh, you know to speak how to speak our language. And I just pray, Lord, that when we offer ourselves and our arts into your hands, that you will take it, and it will that you will just use it for your glory, Lord. I really. I want to be a part of that army, Lord, with my painter's brush in my hands, with my ballet shoes on. And um, I just want to be a part of your army. You can use me, Lord. I say yes to you. I say yes to you and I surrender. And Lord, I just pray in the hearts for the artists that they, yeah, that they will that the words that I spoke, that they will help them to train and to hear your voice better. 
and to be um, a pure kennel through their art of your heart, of your voice. And that they will bring a difference, when they, that their art will make a difference in lives of people, not just one, but in many lives of people. And so I just bless the artist and I just um, release, I release Lord, your ways, um, your doors, your open doors. I just say to the doors that are closed, open up, open up. And I thank you, Lord, that they will can just march on through and um, receive from you and bless others in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>